Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to look at a new horn design that's a modification to an existing tweeter. The Fostex T96A I reviewed in a YouTube video about a year ago. I'll put a link to that video in the description. So this is already a very good super tweeter that typically covers from eight kilohertz and up. And so what I wanted to do was to see if I could improve upon an already good tweeter which uh, has great clarity, great um, overall transient detail. And so I uh, did what I thought was a weak link or a weak spot in the design, um, looked at improving uh, this particular area. And so um, just to uh, touch on that a bit, so this is the cross section of the T96A Super Tweeter. Let me just scroll down so you can see here. This is what the tweeter looks like in its stock form. And so it has a 60 millimeter diameter body that's aluminum and then it's secured to the front with these three screws. It has a very small kind of horn mouth. You can see it there, which um, going back to the section view, this is what it looks like here. And so it has almost a conical horn flare uh, and then it has a very shallow chamfer feature. Now there's been no effort made to smooth out the horn geometry and I believe that's been done on purpose. Um, we'll see more about that in the test results. And so in this video what I'd like to do is provide a test data comparison along with my own subjective listening impressions of the new horn lens. And so you can see here this is what I've designed as a replacement. So it replaces the front half of the bullet style tweeter with a new hardwood horn lens that has been CNC machined with my ES horn flare geometry. And so you can see it's more of an exponential horn flare rate and then it has an almost has a full, not a full wrap around, but it does partially wrap around uh, and then transitions uh, to a more smooth mouth. And so if we look at the uh, front view of the horn, you can see here that I've decided to go with an oval shape instead of the regular circular shape. And so the idea here is two things. So first, I'm trying to distribute the edge diffraction frequencies uh, by creating a variable distance from the center of the bullet. Now, if the body is perfectly circular, then you're going to have the edge diffraction centered at one particular frequency. And so this is more of a randomization strategy uh, to distribute any potential uh, art edge diffraction artifacts in the frequency band. So you can see um, the other thing that it creates is a, uh, an undercut uh, in the design here so that you can baffle mount the tweeter, which is something that I'll be needing to do with some projects that I have coming up where I want to mount the tweeter into a baffle, which is uh, fairly tricky to do with the current design or the existing design. Okay, so let's uh, let's get right to the frequency response, starting uh, with the stock tweeter. You can see here for my test setup, I've simply placed it on top of a regular base cabinet, which is its typical use scenario. And so you can see here, I'm just gonna click on the, the image there to, to um, bring it up into a larger image. So you can see I've done it on, on axis and then at 15, 30, and 45 degrees off axis. And so what we're seeing here is um, an irregular response in its usable bandwidth, which is from eight kilohertz up to 32 kilohertz. Um, some irregularities there. And so um, the other thing is that the uh, coverage is extremely wide. Um, I found that there is even strong output a full 90 degrees off axis. And so this is telling us that this is a diffraction style tweeter and that it's using diffraction to basically spray the coverage in a 180 degree listening window. Now um, there's other designs that have done this like the JBL slot tweeters and it's just a method of uh, creating really wide coverage. Now diffraction um, has its drawbacks in that it creates some resonances. Uh, you can see here that the response is not uh, linear. Um, you have some overlap. If I zoom in particularly here, you can see that the blue is the on axis and it actually has about a 2, D, 2 dB drop compared to 
uh, what happens when you move off axis. So we're actually seeing an increase in output in the 10 kilohertz region in the 15 and 30 degree off axis. And then we see a peculiar thing happen at 15 kilohertz where the narrow the directivity narrows drastically. And so if you were listening to the tweeter at 45 degrees off axis, it would be a very kind of bandpass type effect where you're hearing the 10 kilohertz predominantly. And so what we're trying to do with the new horn lens is address some of these directivity errors and also improve the on-axis on frequency response. And when I say improve the response, what we're trying to do is improve the overall clarity. And so here is the uh, result with the new horn lens. You can see here that we drastically altered the overall off-axis sound character. And so we have a smoother uh, response on axis as well as a smoother response off. And then we're getting uh, even power distribution into the room. So you can see at 30 degrees off axis, we're getting a very consistent frequency response. And it's much more similar to the on axis. It's simply attenuated down. Okay, so if we look at the time domain aspect, we can see the stock burst decay. A little bit of stored energy there in the... Uh, uh, 12, 13 kilohertz region. Moving on to the new horn lens, we can see that it's cleaned up slightly. We really notice a difference when we look at the CSD plot, which has the depth scale changed to time in milliseconds. We can see that at the, the uh, 25 dB down into the noise floor, we have some noise generated. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, with the new horn lens, we can see that we've improved that noise and it's almost completely gone away. So um, I did some subjective listening on the tweeter. So I should say up front that the tweeter does sound excellent in stock form. And so the idea here is just to take it that little bit further and improving an already great design. And so um, what I found was that the tweeter does have excellent transient detail, excellent clarity. It's able to reproduce uh, stringed instruments with authentic uh, dynamics and that you know the, the string plucks on, a, on an acoustic guitar for example it's able to re reproduce that with uh, great realism so if I had to pinpoint a draw um, a negative side to the sound I would say that the sound is a little bit hashy and for lack of a better uh, word I don't know how else to describe it as like a hash sound to it um, so uh, another characteristic of the stock tweeter is that as you move around the room, the sound character changes noticeably, and especially when you're at the 45 or more um, off axis, it's just like it's got its own kind of bandpass effect at 10 kilohertz, and I don't think that it's doing any favors to the sound when such a narrow part of the bandwidth is being produced off axis like that. So, um, so uh, switching uh, over to the new horn lens and doing the same kind of listening and walking around the room. Um, the first thing is that the overall clarity has been improved. The uh, slight hashy sound character is completely gone and I'm hearing much more into the uh, low level detail retrieval. And uh, as I move off axis, um, it uh, correlates with what we saw with the frequency response. The sound character stays the same as I move about the room. And so when I move 45, uh, 60, and 90 degrees off axis, the sound is simply attenuated down. And it has, still has the, uh, the same kind of sound signature as the on axis, but attenuated significantly down. And so I would say if you're talking about trade-offs, I would say the trade-off here is that we're getting less soundstage width and we're trading that for better clarity, better soundstage depth and uh, better low level detail retrieval along with better uh, overall smoothness to the sound. Um, so uh, the stock tweeter I found did provide a little bit better soundstage width, but it was to the detriment of those other attributes that I mentioned. Okay, so uh, one unfortunate thing uh, is that Fostex has discontinued the T96A. Uh, however, Fostex still produces a number of models, the T900, the, T900, the T90A, uh, which has been around for like two decades. Um, okay, so uh, I've purchased the T900A and I'm going to do kind of a similar design and do some testing on the T900A, which has much bigger body diameter. I believe it's around 80 uh, millimeters in diameter and it's a much higher sensitivity. 
Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, now we produced this for a customer and we decided to produce a couple extra pairs. So if you're interested in those, um, we have it in the lace wood, which you see here, and we also have it in the walnut. So uh, yeah, if you want uh, to get, reach out to me, I'll put my contact link in the description. So that's it for today. Uh, take care and have a great day.